Forces from Beyond, the latest Runeterra expansion. One of the most popular champions of all time finally got added to the game. And in case you're confused, I'm talking about the champion that's popular for gameplay and visual reasons. Not the one you see when you dive a little Harder. deeper on the internet. Okay. Anyway, yeah, Forces from Beyond, or the Powerful Women expansion, the Femme Fatale expansion, the Mobby expansion, you name it, and I'm sure you'll find a group of people that feel the same way. For me though, I'm a jungler, so the only champion that doesn't immediately piss me off on sight because I had to lane against them was Evelyn. Sadly, she was also probably the most disappointing addition this time around, but we'll get to that later. In this video, I want to talk about the direction Runeterra is currently heading in. And spoiler alert, the problem is actually not that delicious, succulent, mouth-watering keyword soup. Mm. And another disclaimer, this is about the current state of Runeterra. Cards are designed months, if not years in advance, so it always takes a while before feedback reaches the newer sets. Maybe Riot wants Runeterra to go in the do something powerful and end the game fast direction? Maybe that's just a symptom of the current set and changes? We don't know. All I can do is address how I feel about the game as an LOR boomer. And yeah, while there are some frustrating aspects that I want to talk about, there's also a lot of good stuff. The last two expansions, when looking at standalone cards, are pretty much on par with Rising Tides and how insanely fun that was. So let's actually take a step back and look at the expansion before FOB, Worldwalker. In this expansion, there was one champion that was designed beautifully. One champion that could have been beautiful, but barely missed the mark, a stat stick, and lastly, a balloon that has possibly the most infuriating design in all of Runeterra. This expansion also introduced Runeterra champions, a new type of champion card that didn't have a region, but instead were their own region with a select card package. For Jin, a very wide selection of cards, and for Bard, a very narrow selection of cards. I said Jin missed the mark because his origin allows him to play any card with a skill. And there's a lot of them. But the sad reality is that while this opens up a ton of potential regions and cards, it all boils down to stuns and nexus damage. And that's not really a bad thing, but the fact that Jin was so hyped up with the reveal stream and his popularity in League of Legends, and I mean he's even one of my favorite champions, and frankly one of the best designed characters in any game ever if you ask me. So that did make it a little sad that he's only playable in one underwhelming burn deck with Annie. And trust me, I've tried to make him work in other regions, it's just not competitive. Even in his best deck, he's not actually that good. You know, especially right now with the way the game works, which is why I'm making this video. I will say though that playing Jin can feel super satisfying. Seeing all those skills go on the stack feels super good. But yeah, all they do is direct damage to the Nexus, so it's not like anything actually cool is happening, it's just a number going down. After Jin is Bart. And what's even left to say about this card? This guy has been ruining Runeterra since his release, and I really hate saying that because I actually like his design. The potential to build your deck around chimes, optimizing the stat boost and printing with dualies, it's all so much fun. But when you play him, games are decided by early chime draws and stats that become impossible to fight on curve. Nobody likes losing to RNG, and while Runeterra champion regions are supposed to be a way to balance them, the fact Bard gets one of the best one drops in the game to put in his deck makes playing him very consistent. And Bard himself, as in the champion card, is usually the worst card in a Bard deck. Anyway, yeah, I really like the potential of Rune Terror champions, but with Bard and Jin, it feels like they are only scratching the surface. When the idea was presented, it felt like it was going to be something you can build your deck around and accomplish something cool that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do. But Bard and now Evelyn have very restrictive deck building. These new strategies are being overshadowed by big piles of stats and big piles of keywords. And I know I'm I'm not trying to contradict myself, I don't think that's the problem with Runeterra currently. I'm just talking about some missed potential with Runeterra champions themselves. But hey, there's still a new concept, so who knows what Riot is cooking up for us. I'm sure Fiddlesticks will be released as a Runeterra champion and he'll blow everyone away with how cool and handsome he is. Alright, you can take that Copium Injector off of me now. So, next expansion, Forces from Beyond. Three new champions, all super cool design in my opinion. And I know that's already a controversial opinion to have. Gwen does something really unique with Hallowed, and I like her payoff a lot, especially those snip snip animations. The infinite attack deck is a bit of a problem, but there's an easy fix for that. Just make it so that eternal dancers can only summon something once every turn like Callista. Boom, fixed. Sunny balancing at your service. I will say though that that'll be the only time I try to give a solution for a problem. I have said this over and over in my previous video, 
videos that I don't like coming up with solution in these type of videos because I'm not a developer. Dan Felder, a designer for Runeterra, recently made a post about this and I'd highly recommend checking it out. Absolutely incredible and the open communication genuinely made me feel so good about this game. After Gwen is Evelyn, the Runeterra champion with a super underwhelming origin because there isn't even a passive effect like Jen and Bart. Huh? But I still really like what she does in the game. The husks create really interesting play patterns where you have to think about what you want to summon next. I want Overwhelm and Challenger on my units that are good in combat, and I want Tough and Spell Shield on my engines. Obviously, there's RNG involved, and that's not always fun, especially when you get the disgusting pink husk. But overall, I still really enjoy the way Evelyn plays with her toys. I, I mean, plays with her keywords. <clears throat> Anyway, and then lastly, there's Kai'Sa. And Kai'Sa is where we really start to see some of the cracks in the current way Runeterra works. Kai'Sa with Demacia is a deck that makes you think you're playing against a mid-range deck. It plays some units on curve, it challenges your units like any pure innocent Demacia deck would. You might get a little confused because they play this 1-1 Lurk card and even this 2-3 Elusive Tough card that, honestly, I forgot was even in the game. Anyway, it's all fair game. You have some back and forth and then suddenly turn 5 rolls around and the Kai'Sa player pulls out a gun. And if you manage to survive Kai'Sa, you'll find out they were also hiding a rocket launcher behind their back. In the Kai'Sa teaser video, it was mentioned that she'd be a keyword champion with a combo finish. And this got me super excited because I love playing that way. You navigate the game making optimal use of your keywords, and then when you've racked up a ton of them, you become unstoppable. It's Victor, and I love Victor. So as far as Kai'Sa goes, I think she's actually fine for the most part. Some of the stuff she does is a little too strong, but I wouldn't want Riot to murder her deck. I just like it if it would stop feeling feeling like an OTK deck. You know, that when you play against Kai'Sa, you have a few turns to win because when she comes down and copies Overwhelm and Scout, the, the match is pretty much done for. And another big problem is that rocket launcher, the Void Abomination. People like to compare Kai'Sa and him to the Arsenal or Pantheon, but that feels like missing the point completely. The Arsenal is only playable in one very specific archetype, Landmarks. The card was literally made to give decks like that a finisher. Is he strong? Sure, but you have to pay 8 mana and do a lot of work to get him to be an actual threat. Pantheon has also been frustratingly strong, but his keywords were never the issue. Especially with one of his special ingredients being removed from the keyword soup, Scout. It was still possible to miss on the keywords he needed. And you know, he didn't come with a goddamn board wipe like Kai'Sa. The decks aren't super comparable because Faded's whole thing was being able to turn multiple big piles of stats into threats with Xenoblade, which is also why you can't compare Supercharge to what's happening right now. But yeah, I even rated Supercharge a 3-star card initially because it just doesn't look that powerful on its own. But what I didn't realize was the fact that this card exists in a region with Hourglass, Deny, and units that need to be killed the turn they hit the board. The keywords for Pantheon and Arsenal were also random, and Void Abomination and Kai'Sa can guarantee you'll be getting Spell Shield, Elusive, and Scout which is honestly all you're hoping for when you roll the keyword dice. <sighs> this video is turning into a bit of a rant, isn't it? The thing is, I see a lot of complaints about the keyword soup and how it's boring, but I actually really like it. It just feels really rewarding to stack them up and making the best use out of every keyword you can get. But on the other hand, that playstyle is completely thrown out of the window if you get multiple at the same time. Victor has been my favorite champion since he got released because you need to think on your feet depending on what keyword you roll. When I play Victor, I feel like I'm playing Risk of Rain. You pick a survivor and you have some basic abilities. You start up a run and you get dropped into random maps and you pick up random items. You have stuff that's good on every survivor like attack speed and crit chance, but also more niche items like bonus fire damage or taking less damage when sprinting. And those are the keywords or items that you need to build around and adapt your playstyle to. Or, you know, you're like me, you play engineer and you just yell bungus, bungus, bungus. Victor is picking up items one by one, enhancing my robot and slowly getting stronger and progressing my win con. Fair, calculated, and depending on my next item, I adapt my game plan. Pantheon is comparable, but instead of getting items one by one, he lets his goons do some of the work and he comes down with five items already equipped. Kai'Sa and Void Abomination are total cheaters because not only do they come with multiple items and strong baseline stats when they're summoned, they also pick what items they want instead of getting random ones. Kai'Sa and Evelyn have a lot of synergies because Evelyn summons her husks and they act as keywords for Evolve. And I actually love this deck. It doesn't have a very high win rate, but the way this deck plays is super satisfying to me. Also, Evelyn followers are just so goddamn cool. Have you heard the voice line for that gold Solter? My god, I can't get enough. Warm your body, warm your soul. And then you have Kai'Sa with her emotionless quotes. Okay, I, I give her a lot of 
trash, but they actually really make me smile. I, I don't know what it is. It's the accent, the thing that she's actually saying and how cheesy it is. And bonus point for Star Guardian Kaisa. I'm stronger than the dark. Anyway, in this Evelyn Kaisa deck, there's this six mana guy called Steam. And the best part is when Steam said it's steaming time and totally steamed those guys. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so he has the scout keyword because I think the devs realized how stupidly powerful it is to give scout to Void Abomination and Kaisa. So they made you pay six mana for a bad unit in this deck specifically. But uh, turns out, Demacia has a pretty good region with a lot of access to scout units, and that's just a much more consistent way of getting there. Give your Kaisa scout, give her spell shield, give her overwhelm with her boss a champion spell, add a board clear on top, and you have a pretty geared up champion for turn five. One of my biggest issues with all of this is the region Kaisa's in. Spell shield is just way too accessible in Shurima, because on top of that, they have a ton of really cheap protection. Quicksand, Hourglass, and Right make it so that you really shouldn't even bother to interact with the Kaisa, because they always have something to protect her. This was also seen in the Renekton Papercraft decks. You slap double attack on a Rune Runner with Spell Shield, and you're pretty much set for the OTK. I hate how good these decks are, because interaction isn't a word that exists in the vocabulary of attached units. And this made it so that the current meta plays out in a way where you're no longer interacting with your opponent to win the game. You're trying to do something powerful before they can do their powerful thing. Thrall's instantly summoning a board of 8-8s, Monish Rima restoring the Sun Disk, Lulu Chompers popping off with Sneezy Biggle Dust and Poros, Azir Relia throwing infinite attackers on the board that are hard to interact with, Nami decks, Papercraft with either Shurima or the Riven version, Winding Light, Concurrent Pillar and Bird in Ice plus Intet Stairs, and of course, now Demacia Kaisa. All of these decks have two very important things in common that sums up this entire video. They are incredibly hard to interact with, and they want to do one specific powerful thing. I used to look at my collection and find a card I wanted to build a deck around. Azirelia was the first deck that made me go, when I encounter this deck, I will just insta-concede. And the number of decks that make me feel this exact way have only increased since. And it's because of the fact that these decks do not care about interaction. Oh, you want to play a barkeep deck? Good luck blocking multiple attacks multiple times every round. Turn into, oh, you want to play a barkeep deck? Good luck dealing with my spell shield OTK machine backed up by right. It doesn't really feel like you're winning the game you're playing anymore at the highest level. It just feels like you got to do your powerful thing before your opponent with minimal interaction. And that doesn't mean there is no skill involved because there definitely is, but the back and forth between player is more or less gone. Lee Sin was a champion that was very much known for this. And listen, I hate Lee Sin. He is easily my least favorite champ in the game because of how frustrating it is to lose to him. But a lot of powerful decks in the game right now are trying to copy what he was known for. That feeling of dread and hopelessness you felt against OTK decks is now something you feel against almost every single deck that is good. So again, this video just comes down to LOR Boomer missing his old game. And yeah, I get that not everybody is going to like hearing that. But I didn't start playing this game because I just want to pop off before my opponent does. I want to feel smart and play cards to respond to my opponent. If I want to be faster than my opponent, I'll go play Mario Kart. At least Mario Kart still has blue shells for the first place, you know? But even that wouldn't be enough to stop Shurima from what they're trying to do. In any card game, any game even, your ultimate goal should be to bring the game to a state where your opponent can't interact with you. Or in simple words can't beat you. You can do this by killing them, emptying their resources, or completing your alternate win con. That is how you win a game. You can get there in any way you want. In Risk of Rain, like I mentioned earlier, it's by picking up items and adjusting your build accordingly until you're so OP you one-shot everything. In Mario Kart, it's by being so far ahead in first place that even a blue shell can't stop you. In Runeterra, you can play aggro to kill someone before they can interact, control to empty their resources, mid-range by playing for tempo and getting value out of your cards, and there's combo decks that set up their uninteractive win con. Right now we reach that state in the game where you don't need to outplay at all. There's no out. The decks that are good right now only require you to play. No more planning ahead, just play cards until you can copy Scout, Spell Shield, and Overwhelm. And if your opponent dares to interact, well, you have right an hourglass. Funnily enough, Bard actually falls outside of this playstyle. He's played with Lowey in a stat stick deck that makes simple on-curve units feel unfair to fight against. But he's not uninteractive. So let's sum it all up. This is what it comes down to. Spell Shield is too accessible on top of cheap protection in Shurima. Removal is weak, even with Disintegrate being printed in Worldwalker. There are too many overstated keyword monsters with Kai'Sa and Devoid Abomination. Interaction feels pointless. You win games by doing something powerful before your opponent. On-curve stats are too big and feel unfair to fight against because of chimes. This type of gameplay has been prevalent for the past few months, so I'm making this video now because Kai'Sa is doubling down on the direction we're moving in. And lastly, the Runeterra champions. What ended up happening is that we have two different kinds right now. There's Bart and Evelyn, and as much as I like Evelyn, it comes down to high variety because of random chimes and husks with a very small pool of powerful cards. The second kind is a very large selection of cards, but Jin right now has no home. So we're at the point right now
now where I still have faith in Rune Tower champions, but Bard and Evelyn feel like the wrong direction to head in because of the small, specific pool on top of random effects to make them work. Jin has potential, but aggro is bad right now and he's still limited in what he can do. I want to look at Rune Tower champions and think, oh, how do I build my deck around this? Control? Aggro? But what it ends up being is selecting the Rune Terra champion and adding the same two or three cards every time. And one final main point of frustration is how close we actually are to an amazing meta. Tier 1 decks might make me want to rage quit, but the tier 2 and 3 meta is some of the best we've ever seen. And I know I'm going to get more, oh, it's sunny, that doomsayer comments, and yeah, let them come. Just like the last video, I fully stand behind my feelings, and I want to talk about them. I love Rune Terra. The game isn't dying, but when the game moves in a direction that is less fun than the previous direction, I want it to be known. I also like new cards being above average when they got released, so they actually see play. However, again, this is the direction the game has been moving towards for a while now, and the problem is much deeper than Kai'Sa feels too strong. I will always support this game, no matter what. The game is fun and gives me life, just not as much as it used to. So this is a message to the community, to the developers, and to the people that watch my content. I want Runeterra to be the best it can possibly be, and together, I know we can do that.